Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. Assembled before us here are the items we're going to need this morning to take an impression of this porcelain fused to metal and pin ledge preparation. In the front here, we have a periodontal probe that you'll need, some type of locking forcep or hemostat, our mixing spatulas, probably an acrylic burr. We have a 3-0 twist drill and metal impression pins right up in the front here. Our typodon, of course, the special tray we've already made the night before, our adhesive, and our polysiloxane impression material. Also, we may need some red wax and, of course, the impression syringe. Let's first start and take the custom impression tray, and we'll take the adhesive and begin by painting this adhesive on the inside of this impression tray. We've finished painting the tray and notice we have a thin layer everywhere and we haven't allowed the, the adhesive to pool in any areas. We're going to set this aside and let it sit for at least 20 minutes before we're able to use it and get all the adhesive qualities out of this material. Before we go any farther, let's review this pin ledge preparation so you know what we're working with. Here's the preparation and the margins go up over the incisal ledge down interproximally and around the cervical. We have three pins that are going to be drilled, two in the incisal that are connected by an incisal ledge, a cingulum pin that has a recess for it, and a mesial box. When we take the impression of this preparation, we have to make sure that the impression material goes beyond the cervical margin into the sulcus about a millimeter past the cervical margin. Since the acrylic or the gingiva is right up next to the tooth, we're going to have to take this tooth out and relieve the area in the sulcus slightly with an acrylic burr. That will do right now. and also over on the other side. Notice that we preserved as much of the edentulous ridge as we could. And we're about ready to start again and prepare our pinholes. We have now relieved the cuff of gingiva in this area. Similar to in the mouth, we'd be placing retraction cord in this area and leaving it dry for a period and taking it out and displacing the, the sulcus. Now we're ready in the future to take this impression of this tooth. But before we go to that, we have to drill the two incisal pinholes and the cervical pinhole so that they all line up in the same line of draw and also line up with the porcelain fused to metal preparation. The incisal pinholes are going to be placed at a depth of two and a half millimeters. The cingulum pinhole will be three millimeters. To begin with then, we're going to start with this distal incisal pinhole and drill it to its depth. We start with a 3-0 twist drill running clockwise. And we will run it slowly and drill in to a depth of two and a half millimeters. This has to line up, of course, with the labial of the, pre of the central and the other pins. So we will drill initially only one millimeter, blow out the excess debris, We'll now test the parallelism of our pinhole by placing one of the metal impression pins in the pinhole at this time and, and placing it all the way to depth and sighting down that pinhole and turning it from different angles 
It's only in a millimeter, so it's not real stable. And we should look at it to see that it's parallel to the porcelain fused to metal preparation out here on the labial. If that is the correct angulation, we can go ahead then and drill it to its two and a half millimeters. If it's not, this is the time to correct that angulation problem and re-drill the pinhole. So we'll take the impression pin out at this time and go ahead and continue drilling the depth of the pinhole down to its two and a half millimeter depth. There we go. We're just completing drilling the pinhole to its depth. We're going to take that out. We're going to check our pin and place it in the pinhole. And we have placed a little red wax on its tip to help stabilize it. It now lines up with the line of draw of the porcelain fused metal preparation. And we can leave this pin in and go ahead and drill the other two pinholes, one in the incisal at two and a half millimeters, and the other at the cingulum at three millimeters. We have drilled two of our pinholes, and you can see the two impression pins, and we're going to come now and place the third impression pin down in its pinhole and check again to make sure they all line up. And we can rotate this, checking the line of draw from all different angles to make sure they line up. We should also be able to sight directly down the pinholes and only see the round end on the head of the pin. If we start to see the side, we know that the pins do not line up exactly in the preparation, nor do they line up with the pores infused to metal. At this point now, we are ready to take our impression. We will then leave these impression pins in the pinholes and prepare ourselves for the impression procedure. We've already dispensed the light body polyvinyl siloxane impression material, and we're ready to mix and fill our impression syringe. So we only have 30 seconds to mix this and get it loaded in the syringe. So we'll put all of one material in and quickly start mixing it together. Then we will strop it back and forth. And we're ready to then load our syringe and place the plunger in the end. We'll now go over and start syringing initially down in the sulcus area, work our way all the way around into the boxes and grooves up over the incisal edge and come over to the porcelain fused to metal restoration and work around it completely at the sulcus area and completely cover this preparation also. We can go ahead and cover it into the occlusal surfaces if we have extra left over, and also the lingual surfaces here. Before seating the tray, we will lightly touch on the tip of each of these little pins to make sure they are fully seated into the impression material. And we're now ready to seat our heavy body tray. We'll now take the tray and seat it down on top. And set it aside and wait till it has fully set. Our impression material now is fully set. We've waited eight minutes from the time we started mixing it. And we're ready to take the tray off. One good way is to try to lever it up lightly in the back areas to get it to release. Make sure you try to remove this tray in the long axis of the pins, since that's the area that we don't want to break those preparations. We'll slowly work our way back and forth. And the tray is beginning to come off. See if we can 
lightly relieve it. And let's turn this over and take a look. You can see all our impression pins stayed in the impression. This doesn't always happen, but we have to make sure they're all the way in place. So we need to press down on each impression pin to make sure it's all the way down in its pinhole. And if an impression pin does come out and stay in the tooth, we can just place it right back in here tap it to place, and as you can see now, we can read the margins very easily down here along the cervical. Here's the cervical margin all the way around on the mesial. The box is completely recorded. We can go over here to our porcelain fused to metal restoration. We can see also we have the margin all the way around this, and on the cingulum area, we also have that cervical margin. This impression then is ready to send to the lab to have it silver plated. We'll mark the tray with our bench number and it's ready to send out. I've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu license.